Good morning and welcome to the benefits of Canterbury, St Dunstan, St Mildred and St Peter. We're coming to you uh, from the Dorsetshire uh, coastal area and uh, uh, we are uh, about to broadcast our service of morning prayer on Tuesday the 13th of February 2024. My name is John Morrison and I'm standing in for our rector, the Reverend Joe Richards, and our curate, the Reverend Jenny Walpole. And uh, the weather is quite rainy here in Weymouth. Um, the Holy Spirit and uh, the uh, gurus of uh, internet technology um, have got together and uh, put us back online uh, from the disaster we had yesterday. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence. bringing life and life to all creation and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The refrain for Psalm 32, starting at the first verse, is, Happy the one... Uh, my apologies. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Happy the one whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. Happy the one whom the Lord imputes no guilt and in whose spirit there is no guile. For I held my tongue, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. Your hand was heavy upon me and day and night. My moisture was dried up like the drought in summer. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Then I acknowledge my sin to you, and my iniquity I did not hide. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore let all the faithful make their prayers to you in time of trouble, in the great water flood, it shall not reach them. You are a place for me to hide in. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with the songs of deliverance. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Be not like horse and mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great tribulations remain for the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Give us honest hearts, O God, and send your kindly spirit to help us confess our sins and bring us the peace of your forgiveness in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The refrain for Psalm 36 is, With you, O God, is the well of life. With you, O God, is the well of life. Sin whispers to the wicked in the depths of their heart. There is no fear of God before their eyes. They flatter themselves in their own eyes that their abominable sin would not be found out. The words of their mouth are unrighteous and full of deceit. 
They have ceased to act wisely and to do good. They think out mischief upon their, head, their beds and have set themselves in no good way, nor do they abhor that which is evil. With you, O God, is the well of life. Your love, O Lord, teaches, reaches to the heaven and your faithfulness to the cloud. Your righteousness stands like strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You, Lord, shall save both man and beast. How precious is your loving mercy, O God! All mortals' flesh shall take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They shall be satisfied with the abundance of your house. They shall drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light shall we see light. With you, O God, is the well of life. O oh, continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your righteousness to those who are true of heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me, nor the hand of the ungodly thrust me away. They are they fallen, there are they fallen. All who work wickedness, they are cast down and shall not be able to stand. With you, O oh God, is the well of life. O oh God, the well of life, make us bright with wisdom, that we may be lightened with the knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 17. Verses 12 to the end. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. And he answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now. See if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron and he came to Shechem and a man found him wandering in the fields and the man asked him what are you seeking I am seeking my brothers he said tell me please where are they pasturing the flock and the man said they have gone away for I heard them say let us go to Dothan so Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan they saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood. Throw him into the pit there in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to, the father, to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and they threw him into a pit. The pit was empty and there was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up, they saw a caravan of the Ishmaelites coming from Gilead, with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carrying it, to carry it down to Egypt. And Jesus said, Judah said to his brothers, "What profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and lay not our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh." And the brothers agreed. And when some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up lifting him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the pit and saw that Joseph was not in the pit, he tore his clothes. He returned to his brothers and said, The boy is gone, and I, where can I turn? Then they took Joseph's robes, slaughtered a goat, and dripped the robe in the blood. They had, long, uh, they had the long robe with sleeves taken to their father, and they said, this we have found 
a senile, whether it is your son's robe or not. He recognized it and said, it is my son's robe. A wild animal has devoured him. Joseph is without doubt torn to pieces. And Jacob tore his garments and put sackcloth on his loins and mourned for his son for many days. All his sons and all his daughters sought to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted and said, no, I shall go down to Sheol to my son mourning. Thus his father bewailed him. Meanwhile, the Midianites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard. Our canticle, Spirit of God, teach us your ways that we may walk in the paths of peace. Come, let us go up to the mountain of God, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For the law shall go out from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between the nations and the word of the Lord from uh, uh, Jer Jerusalem shall mediate for many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Spirit of God, teach us in your ways, that we may walk in the paths of peace. Our second reading this morning is from Galatians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem and with Barnabas, taking Titus along with me. And I went up to, in response to the revelation. Then I laid before them, although only one in a private meeting with the acknowledged leaders, uh, the gospel that I proclaim among the Gentiles in order to make sure that I was not running uh, or had not run in vain. But even Titus, who was with me, was not compelled to be circumcised, though he was a Greek. But because of false believers secretly brought, up, brought in, who slipped into spy on the freedom we have in Christ Jesus, so that they might enslave us, we did not submit to them, even for a moment, so that when the truth of the gospel might always be remain with you. And from those who were supposed to be the acknowledged leaders, what they actually were uh, makes no difference to me. God shows no partiality. Who's, those leaders contributed nothing to me. On the contrary, when they saw that I had been entrusted with the gospel of the uncircumcised, just as Peter had been entrusted with the gospel for the circumcised, for he worked through Peter, making him an apostle to the circumcised, also worked through me in sending me to the Gentiles. And when James and Cephas and John, who were acknowledged pillars, recognized the grace that had been given to me, they gave to Barnabas and me the right hand of free fellowship, agreeing that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. They asked only one thing that we remember the poor, which was actually what I was eager to do. Our responsory. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Our gospel canticle is the Benedictus, the song of Zechariah. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high will, shall break upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old, 
to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Gracious God, we thank you for this day and all the tasks that we are about in your name. We pray for the world and its many needs and for the church and its life that the church may be united in the communities of the world. We pray for all those who today are sick in body, mind or spirit, those who find themselves innocently in the midst of famine or disaster. We pray especially for those who are victims of abuse and violence, intolerance and prejudice. And we pray for all those who have been bereaved, that they may find comfort in your love. And we pray especially and willingly for all those who work in the medical and healing professions at whatever level. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer, our collect. Almighty Father, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us for our service of morning prayer. We will attempt, uh, in the face of uh, real challenges from uh, the internet in this area, uh, to be with you this evening at six. Um, otherwise, please have a wonderful day today and a wonderful week as it goes on. Bye for now.